All right, the first part of Top Secret will be the fruit jam kind of reveal as we're doing things. And then um, we have another Top Secret video. And then I'm going to talk about an idea. And then I'm going to talk about Lady Ada talking about something. And then I'm going to talk about goldfish crackers. And then uh, there's going to be questions. There's questions. So we'll see you on the other side of the first two videos, which is about five minutes altogether. Yeah, what is this? Okay, this is my RP2350 fruit jam. This is a Rev B. You can kind of barely see it mm. under this Kapton tape. And some people were like, hey, like, are you going to work on the fruit jam again? What, what happened with that? And basically what happened is I was doing really good. Um, and then, you know, all of April just turned into like Tariff Town. And then May turned into catching up on all the stuff I missed out on during Tariff Town. Mm. But now I'm back to doing hardware. You guys have seen like there's much more hardware coming into the Adafruit shop. Uh, we're working on old stuff. So getting back to this, and the one thing I wanted to get working this week is the ESP32C6, which you see here. Same, same thing as uh, this dev kit. And also, uh, we have a feather with a C6 on it. Um, and what's nice about the C6 is it does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, and it's very low cost and it's very small compared to the ESP32 Classic. It doesn't do Bluetooth Classic, but it does do uh, BLE. One thing, uh, by the way, if you're like, what's up with this red wire? So, you know, to do your download, you have to pull, I think it's IO8 up. And I didn't realize that. So I had to uncap the module and then like solder to this little, like, little pin here. You only have to like do it when you're first uploading. But anyways, once that got done, I also had to like, I didn't connect this wire by accident. Eh, a couple things went on in this IRQ pin. But, you know, that's what revisions are all about. But the good news is that um, I got the, we, we have a latest version uh -oh. of... Oh, of, yes. on my computer. Yeah, don't, yeah, worry. No, don't worry about the hardware. No, no who cares not. about that? Uh, no, we got a, a PR better. for uh, ESP32 uh, wife uh, the Nina firmware, and um, we updated to the latest IDF, which adds support for the ESPC6, and also like fixes a couple other things. And I think we fixed also the um, uh, certificate bundle, so it's like more modern. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna finally got to testing this. And the good news is that it works. So i running the Wi-Fi web client. This is an Arduino. Of course, it'll work the same in uh, CircuitPython. But um, it can connect to Wi-Fi. I don't know why it's a little slow. I got I think it's in debug mode. Um, but it will connect to the Wi-Fi, and then it'll connect to um, the Adafruit uh, web server. Well, it's supposed to. Maybe. 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 Yeah. When I bumped it, I messed it I up. I don't know. No, it's not your fault. Let's try again. I bumped it. You know. Who knows, man? Hardware. There you go. And this time it's it's connecting. Yeah. Um, connects to uh, the Adafruit Wi-Fi, and then you know it does this little test. It's like if you can read this, it's working. Um, yeah, it's very delicate. There's all these wires. So you know, the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is I'm going to book a new version, Web C, which doesn't have all these like blue wire hacks all over the place, um, unless like I have to probe stuff to make sure it works. And then um, I'm going to finish testing the. Um, audio, that's like the last thing to test. And then I'm actually done. All the other hardware has been verified and working. A couple other fixes that I had to do, but otherwise we're we're okay. getting close to Rev C and then hopefully a final launch. Mm. Lady, what is this? Hey, this is a rainbow spiral. This is my test for the new board that I'm wrapping up and getting to the shop, the triple output active shifting RG matrix bonnet. So this gives you uh, RP, sorry, Raspberry Pi zero up to five um, with level shifting output to three, uh, you know, RGB matrix panel. These are called hub 75 panels. They come in, you know, 16 by 32 up to 64 by 128. Here I'm demoing all three outputs. You can see the cables kind of underneath jammed um, and they're running in parallel. And what's interesting about this is actually it's running on a Raspberry Pi five using the RP1 chip underneath here as an RP uh, one PIO driver. So this is actually not using any CPU time and you can see the um, frames per second up here. So, you know, we might be able to improve the uh, throughput. What's nice though is it's like, you know, this beautiful, I think this is 24-bit uh, color, uh, PWM RG matrix, and you're not using a core. And so you can actually do stuff with the Raspberry Pi 5 and then still have it drive lots of matrices. So I've got like nine total of these. So I might make like, you know, a cool big panel. Yeah. And oh, then, uh, maybe I should send this to uh, a friend who's doing some writing for Raspberry Pi magazine. That would be you think, you yeah. think they like this. They went like that, yeah. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll send a link to this part of the video. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, do you want this? This is cool. How many of these do you have? 
I have uh, five. So we could send one to them. I could send. Well, okay. also getting the final boards in like a week or two. Okay, so this is how things work, folks. I we there's an author who makes great articles about new things coming up, and we know that we're going to have this soon, and I can send it to them before we're done with it, and yeah. then by the time the magazine comes out, it'll be ready to go. And then check out Jepler's PIO Matter Library. I'll link it in the description, which adds this uh, PIO driver support for RG matrices on the Pi Five. Um, so that's, you know, because you can't use GPIO bit banging anymore. That's how you would do it on the Pi 5. And it also works on the Pi 4 and 3 and 0. It's just, you know, it's, you're not going to get as great performance as, of course, the most recent chips. This is cool. It can be a big seller. And rainbowy. Yeah. Cool. That style of uh, <coughs> filmography, as they say in the biz, is uh, hanging out with a toddler a lot. That's called the near far shot. Because I just do near far with it. Yeah. We're just doing stuff. And I, that's why I was like doing that because we were, I was doing that one. Yeah. That's why I did. Yeah. you didn't hear the audio because we were just watching it, but that's, yeah. how, that's why it looked like that. Yeah. Anywho, um, we have a couple other things to show you. The next thing is we're going to have the free cams in some people's hands and we're starting to think of cool things to do. We don't really do contests because like people will just enter to win something and it's like garbage and sponsorship and they want your mm -hmm. information. But I do think it's neat, like skateboarding style, like, hey, I did a cool trick, you do a cool trick. So this is a cool trick I saw that someone made and modded, and they put um, like the Mac Mini in. But we're going to put a fruit jam in. So here, check this out. <laughs> Um, what's this? Okay, this is um, a new breakout sensor. Somebody sent it to me and said this is cool because it's like a PIR sensor and does human motion recognition, um, but it's much more compact than a PIR sensor. Um, so I made a breakout for it. And then this is another stepper driver. <clears throat> this is the TMC2240. So actually, this is the 2210, which I th think I sent. Maybe not, though. Um, but this one has SPI, it has like a lot of extras. It has like encoder support, I think, and like analog input. And it does, I think like 2.5 amps per um, stepper. So, you know, just like checking out some more stepper drivers available. This is another one from Trinamic. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, I have a, a bonus track for folks. I have a couple other top secrets. This is some of the videos that Tim is doing for the guide about the history of like boot up screens. There's a video, but that's gonna you're gonna have to wait until the um, the guide comes up. I can give you a little preview of two things, and then we'll go back to the last and final thing before questions. Okay, uh, Lydia, when you think of uh, childhood, is uh, goldfish crackers part of it? Yeah. What about Petridge Farm? Like I remember. Cookies and Delicious. stuff. Delicious, yeah. What's your favorite Petridge Farm cookie? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. What's, do you, what, is there, are you a straight up, just like regular fish cracker person, or do you like some of the new flavors and colors they have? I'm a, cl yeah, I'm a classic, yeah, like chocolate like chip, vanilla, and, you know. Uh -huh. I, like, I like what's good, okay. what's known. So uh, we write about a lot of uh, prolific people on our blog and more. And somehow, some way, um, I think I was saying, I was emailing with um, Sophie, who used to be at Hackaday. And somehow something came up, because I have toddler stuff I'm always doing now, Luna. And we have all sorts of cheddar cracker, cracker fish crackers, everything. And when you have a little kid, you start to get the question, who made that? Or at least that's what we have here. Yeah. Who made that? Where'd it come from? Where'd it come from? What's their name? Why? I want that. Did you build that? Did mommy build that? So give, me, but, give me the whole thing. Yeah, whole thing. So uh, I just suggested everyone look up this cool story because when you're a parent and you have to find 
role models, um, I don't know what I would do if I had like a young boy mm-hmm. because maybe historically because there wasn't as much evidence in social media like they could you could say like oh here's a neat astronaut guy or something scientist guy but there's a lot of like amazing women that I've, you never hear about it. so petridge farm was founded by a woman her name was margaret she uh was the wife of a wealthy stock market person and then the stock market crashed and he got injured in a polo accident she had to like get a job and she's just like well i'm gonna learn how to bake so she wanted to find these wheats and stuff for her son who had like probably celiac now mm-hmm. he had a gluten allergy so she was like making these breads and it was like turning out really good so that was like part of what she was doing um she's known for saying uh she's known as like you don't see this on the like petridge farm side or the campbell soup pipe. so by the way they campbell's soup, campbell's acquired them they're more than soup but what are you gonna do um and she said there's no job that a a man could do that a woman can do and that's kind of a nice statement it's like well maybe it's not the they're not going to be the best out, but you can do it. Mm. And it's like vice versa. I just like that, that she was thinking of that, about that in like 1930. So she sold um, Pepperidge Farm for $28 million. And that was in $1961. So it would have been $237 million. She was the first woman to serve on the Campbell Soup Board of Directors. She was one of the most powerful businessmen, businesswoman, 1950-1960. She uh, still uh, has, the company had a 53 average annual growth rate for 26 years. So that's fast. That's big. Then she, so where did that Milano cookie come from? So, but, so as she was doing this company, she would go to different countries and like find flavors of, around the world. So um, this was the Milano cookie. And this is my bonus track for this story. She went to Belgium and it was a cookie made by the, Delacre company supplies the Belgian royal uh, house and convince them to license their secret recipes to per- Petrid Farm. So they imported a 150 foot cookie oven from Belgium, bringing the other Belgian engineers to oversee the production of the cookies, like Milano Brussels. So this is an engineering story, yeah. and that and it's just, and you know what it's it's a licensing story. Yeah, there is intellectual property. There's a recipe. Mm-hmm. They licensed the recipe. And then here, where did Goldsmith come from? Well, she was in Switzerland in 1962, and it was called Goldfischlini. And it was invented by Oscar Campbell in 1958 as a birthday gift for his wife, who is a Pisces. Margaret licensed the trademark rights, shape, and recipe from Campbell and introduced them in America. That sounds like an electronic product, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and then um, the crackers, they, you know, they pride themselves on being natural stuff. But there, it's not all good news. Like, they did close down the Norwalk facility Mm -hmm. uh years after yeah campbell's got it uh and you know it's cool there's not a lot of stories like this or there is and we're not hearing them so we're going to try to help solve that but don't worry i'm not just going to put look lady had a business it has to have like engineering and samples and how do you route it to something like open source hardware and licensing yeah that license for that fish exists somewhere yeah in the bowels of campbell's like written on yeah (laughs) the bowels of campbell's and i woke up this morning and i said if I can say Bowels of Campbell's on live internet, I had a good day. So with that being said, that's our top secret. Okay. Um, oh, a bunch of people eat. They say, I eat those with my coffee. That's so nice that you eat the uh, cheddar gold, <laughs> the cheddar <laughs> goldfish crackers with your coffee. Anyways, Milano's, so, yeah. I know they do. It's okay. It's being, it's being I like Milano's. Yeah. Milano's favorite picture farm could be everybody likes it. Where'd they come from? Now you know. Very good. Okay.